Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the uh, increasing doubts being expressed in the media and certainly by experts, uh, both government and independent, about the lifting of further restrictions in three weeks time as a result of the Indian variant which is uh, leading to the beginning of a third wave of cases. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, Boris Johnson said when he announced his latest scheme to manage the pandemic that his roadmap would peel back layers of restrictions in a managed way and we would never go backwards into them. That was the key point. It's what allowed him to get away with having a very um, slow easing of restrictions. Remember, this lockdown has been in place since the first week of January. It's lasting basically over half of a year. So the, the way he placated people was saying, well, okay, it might be, we might be coming out of it slowly, but we're never ever going back into it. Um, it came with a series of dates, but he made clear that he would not be led by the dates, but by the data. Of course, if that were the case, you might wonder why I give dates at all. After all, if you give dates, even if you say, oh, you know, this is just at the earliest, if you give dates and don't meet them because the data doesn't allow you to, then it looks like you failed. Why would Boris Johnson put in place a failure standard? A most unusual move, unless, of course, you never believed the data over date statement in the first place. But for a while, there was no conflict. So no test of it. But three weeks away from the final layer of lockdown due to be eased, and we are at the beginning of a third wave driven by the Indian variant that Johnson allowed into the country. The number of cases nationally is increasing, never mind just in the hotspots. As I'm recording this, the number of new cases per day has increased by 27% in a week. In trying to combat this, the government have stepped up their vaccination rollout. Unfortunately, I've already talked about this, they've just stepped it up amongst people you know, less at risk of becoming infected, you know, in chasing those more likely to be hospitalised. So they're pushing the idea of getting second doses to over 50s because if they become infected, much more likely to need hospitalisation rather than focusing on the areas where the infection is getting out of control, if not, is already out of control. Because that's what the restrictions are at the end of the day. It's a way to make sure that our healthcare systems can cope in the short term and worry about long COVID later, or more specifically, let a future government worry about it. The number of hospitalizations and deaths is not showing a consistent increase as yet. Of course, it never does in step. These figures always lag behind, but the vaccines are hoped to be the difference here. Sign of madness to do the same thing in the same way and expect different results, but that's what we seem to be doing. But of course, there is a difference here. The hope is that the vaccine rollout prevents enough infections turning into hospitalizations, you know, at least on a scale that the NHS will struggle to cope with. That's what the government are waiting to see in two weeks' time. Will the clear rise in infections have caused a clear rise in hospitalizations? If not, if the vaccinations, though not making people immune as such, are giving enough protection to massively reduce the number of people who become seriously ill, COVID, then they will say, well, there's no problem, then is there? Uh, and where there is a problem, it's in knowing whether or not the vaccinations will protect us from the third wave. And this is where the timing is not at all in our favor. See. We're right at the start of the third wave. Even if the vaccinations aren't going to provide enough protection, because at the moment we don't know. No one knows. We do not know whether our vaccination rollout is going to provide the level of protection necessary. But if it doesn't provide that in protection, we're not going to see it in an obvious way by the time the government have to make that decision in like two weeks you know, whether to remove that last layer of lockdown or, or put it back. Professor Ravi Gupta, who's an expert on respiratory viruses and advising the government, said that the vaccines will probably slow down the explosive period of new cases in this wave. Because it waves, we've seen this before, we don't need to be told by experts, we've already experienced them, starts off slow and then increases exponentially. So if the vaccines don't actually solve the problem, by the time we discover this, will be well and truly out of any lockdown restrictions. And because Boris Johnson said we're never going back into them, it will be politically too difficult for the government to go back into them. It maybe already is. And, and even were it not, I mean, Johnson himself has shown reluctance to do so anyway. We, we mustn't paint a picture here of Boris Johnson 
wanting to take the scientific advice, but being hobbled by conservative MPs who, who don't pay attention to reality. Every time Johnson has authorised a lockdown, the public mood has been very much in favour of it for some time before. You know, he hasn't even had to wait until the public mood is in favour of it. The clear expert view right now is that we should not remove the last level of lockdown on June the 21st. Not because it's clearly going to cause a massive problem if we do. Not because history is definitely going to repeat itself and we're going to end up with tens of thousands of more deaths. But because there is a chance that it will, a, a, a credible chance, and we do not know. Uh, they're urging caution. But we do not have a government that appreciates the need for caution. Ever. So the media are asking if the June 21st easing will go ahead as planned. Saying, oh, there's all these doubts. I have no idea why that is even a serious question. Boris Johnson refused to follow the scientific advice when it was blindingly obvious that it was going to lead to disaster. When he delayed the lockdown that was asked for in September, we knew it was going to lead to a lot of deaths. When he refused to, to um, carry that lockdown on until it had done its work, we knew that was going to lead to disaster. It did. That was obvious. This is a situation where Boris Johnson could actually get lucky. And that's what's required. He's gambling again. And he's been lucky before. Bear in mind, he has been lucky before. His entire vaccine strategy has been a gamble that has repeatedly paid off. He gambled on a series of vaccines that have actually done the business. When the advice was to give the second dose four weeks after the first, Johnson gambled on 12 weeks instead in order to give as many vulnerable people as possible one dose for some protection. Uh, and, and, you know, that was for political purposes, of course, so that he could say we've vaccinated this many people when what he actually meant was one dose. But it was also a sensible gamble. It was born of necessity. We had to do it. Uh, we're screwed with the pandemic. You know, our NHS have been badly neglected. We have no emergency capacity at all in our healthcare system. We don't even have normal winter capacity. It melts down just pre-pandemic in winter now. Our test and trace is still so bad that the government never mention it unless asked directly. We had to gamble, but it paid off. It's brilliant. But even a necessary risk is still a risk, but we got away with it. I have zero doubts, absolutely zero doubts, that Johnson is more than prepared to gamble yet again. Blimey, when it wasn't a risk, when we knew that delaying lockdown was going to cause tens of thousands of deaths, he still refused to act. He doesn't authorise lockdowns to prevent the NHS melting down. He waits until they are melting down and only then, begrudgingly, acts. How else can you explain how schools went back after Christmas for a single day in January before locking down for six weeks? What suddenly changed in that one day? Nothing. Nothing at all, other than his mind. The data was the same. The advice was the same. He just changed his mind, that's all. When there's a chance he'll get away with it again, of course he will not delay. This is why ministers are explaining the situation in completely the opposite way to the experts advising them. See, they talk about waiting to see what the situation is before deciding. They work on the principle that everything's fine until they see incontrovertible evidence to the contrary. Experts say that we should delay until we've seen the evidence that it's fine. Wait until we know it's fine, then act. That's the difference. The political view is to proceed as planned until we know it's too dangerous to do so. The scientific view is to wait before moving until we know it's safe, that way we save lives. They point out that because we went with the political thinking, we've ended up with not only tens of thousands of excess deaths, but also restrictions in place for longer than would ordinarily be needed. They're urging us to make a different decision this time. But we won't. In fact, the concern is that we won't just remove restrictions, but also measures that don't actually restrict us at all, like social distancing or the use of face masks in settings where you've got a lot of households mixing indoors. So I simply can't see how history isn't going to repeat itself in terms of the political decision, at any rate. Frankly, the decision's already been made. The government are only saying to wait two weeks to make it look like they're going to consider the data at all. They know that at the time they make their decision, it won't be clear to ordinary people that we're headed for disaster, even if we are. They can then get to say when people moan at them and say, why didn't you do this thing? Oh, hindsight's a wonderful thing. 
you know, when people point out how they recklessly ignored advice given before they made that decision. Oh, hindsight's a wonderful thing. It wasn't hindsight, there was it. It's never been hindsight because they've always acted against the scientific advice. But like I said, maybe this time things will be different. Maybe the level of vaccinations will be enough that even with a high number of infections, our hospitals will cope. But it is absolutely the role of a die here, with no safety net if it goes wrong. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.